Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Here's your daily news report and fourth stimulus check update. In today's video, I will be bringing you up to date on the latest stimulus news, including how states are paying their residents one-time $2,000 bonuses. I will also be discussing what is included in the White House's new slimmed-down infrastructure proposal. Everyone, thank you so much for being here today. The winners of this week's $75 Amazon gift card giveaway are Liz Brzezinski and Luis Gonzalez. Congratulations to both of you. Next Friday evening, I will be giving away another $75 Amazon gift card. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. Thank you so much. Some states are paying one-time bonuses up to $2,000 to unemployed workers who accept a job. It is part of a broader strategy to address a perceived labor shortage. Though some economists are skeptical, the approach will pull all out-of-work residents off the sidelines. There are at least 22 Republican-led states that have recently announced their intent to pull out of federal unemployment programs. According to Andrew Stetner, a senior fellow at the Century Foundation, the withdrawal will end or reduce unemployment benefits for nearly 4 million people, about a quarter of all Americans collecting such aid. Affected workers will lose a $300 weekly supplement to benefits as soon as June 12, 2021. However, they will still get their typical state allotment of aid, which generally replaces half a lost paycheck. The self-employed and long-term unemployed in most states will fully lose benefits. Those states are withdrawing two or more months before their scheduled end date of September 6. Officials claim the extra benefits are causing workers to stay on the sidelines, making it harder for businesses to rehire. Making it harder for businesses to hire. Four of the Republican-led states, such as Arizona, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oklahoma, are paying return to work bonuses instead of the enhanced unemployment benefits to encourage residents to accept jobs. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey said last week, in Arizona, we're going to use federal money to encourage people to work instead of paying people not to work. The state's back to work program offers one-time $1,000 payments to unemployment recipients who accept a part-time job and $2,000 to full-timers. The state of New Hampshire, via its summer stipend program, is paying $500 and $1,000 bonuses for part-time and full-time positions, respectively. Montana and Oklahoma are paying $1,200 to those who accept full-time work. There are some economists that don't think unemployment benefits are playing a big role in hiring challenges. One economist said, I think it's a gamble for states to assume expanded unemployment insurance is the sole reason why they're having trouble hiring. I think it factors in some way, but it's impossible to quantify how much and I don't think it's the sole reason. Instead, many economists believe the ongoing crisis is likely the driving force. According to new data, those who have not completed the full regimen may be hesitant to return to work given the continued health risks. And there are other crisis-related factors, like childcare if schools are not fully reopened or daycare centers that still remain closed. There's also generally a lag between labor demand and supply. There are other conditions that are associated with the return to work bonuses that limit their availability. For example, workers in the state of New Hampshire and Arizona are only eligible if their new jobs pay less than $25 per hour. Workers must complete four to 10 consecutive weeks of work to even qualify, depending on the state. Those in the state of Montana and Oklahoma also only may be able to find part-time instead of full-time jobs, which would likely disqualify them from a bonus. Workers must also apply for the bonus. The money is available on a first-come, first-served basis due to finite funding. In Oklahoma, for example, it's available to the first 20,000 qualifying residents. Nearly two months after President Biden laid out his massive plan to upgrade the nation's infrastructure, White House officials presented a slimmed down version as a counteroffer to Republican lawmakers who are seeking a much smaller program. The new plan would reduce the size of Biden's initial proposal from $2.25 trillion to $1.7 trillion and make four key concessions. 
Biden is prepared to take off the table the manufacturing, research and development, and innovation elements and pursue them in separate legislative processes. He will accept the GOP proposed funding level of $65 billion in broadband investments. His plan called for spending $100 billion on broadband, but the White House still believes they can achieve universal access to affordable high-speed internet at the lower funding level, though it may take longer. The White House says it's willing to find a common ground on a financing facility with a range of infrastructure projects eligible, including energy infrastructure. The White House also pointed to nine other areas that they consider very important, but the GOP lawmakers either left out or funded at lower levels. These included the $400 billion measure to bolster caregiving for aging and disabled Americans and improve the wages of home health care workers, which is the second largest piece of Biden's plan as well as investments in the remediation of environmental sites, the enhancements of workforce development programs, and other physical infrastructure to better extreme weather, among others. Mr. President, I'm here on the floor this afternoon to talk about the economy, how to get it on the right track, and particularly how to deal with the jobs crisis that we face right now. It's a different kind of crisis than we normally talk about. There are a lot of jobs open, and the workers that are needed are not coming forward. Washington needs to change direction to get the economy on the right track. Current law provides that at least until Labor Day, that's in September of this year, that there will be a federal supplemental payment of $300 per week added to the state unemployment benefit. So if somebody's on unemployment insurance, they'll get their normal state benefit, which in Ohio is about half of whatever your income was. But on top of that, now there's a $300 federal supplement that was put in place during COVID-19, but it continues until at least September. By doing so, adding that $300, it nearly doubles the unemployment insurance benefit on average. Um, it also results in about 42% of those people who are on unemployment insurance making more on UI than they were making at work. It, it has the effect uh, of, in most states, more than doubling the amount of unemployment insurance, and it also doubles the minimum wage. So you can imagine why this is a disincentive for some people to go back to work if they can make more not working. On top of that, Democrats here in Congress during the COVID-19 legislation added another benefit to people who are on unemployment insurance compared to people who are working. And that is to say that your first $10,000 of unemployment insurance is tax-free. So if you're a truck driver making 35, 40,000 bucks a year, you don't get that tax benefit. But if you're on unemployment insurance, uh, you do get that benefit. Again, another disincentive to go back to work. So everyone, that is the end of the video for this morning. I hope you found this video helpful today. Next Friday evening, I will be giving away another $75 Amazon gift card. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video, and also leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful and blessed Sunday.